everybody, welcome back. We're back here at the winter layout. Today we're going to be doing some painting of the rails, we're going to do some ballasting, and then we're going to do some weathering of the track and ballast. So before we start doing anything, we've got a couple of gaps here where the uh, flexi tracks join together. So we just need to fill that in so we get some old sleepers. And we're just going to trim off the plastic chairs just using a sharp knife. Always remember to cut away from yourself. slide them in. And just make sure they're sat down properly, it's not causing the track to bend. And that looks fine like that. So another gap up here, I'll do that gap and then we'll come back and we'll look at painting the side of the rails to give that rust effect. Right, so we have the gaps filled in now with some old sleepers, that's done. We're going to paint the side of the rail now. For that I'm using the Woodland Scenic track painter. This is rusty rail colour. You just give it a shake. It's got a little fibrous nib in there and to get the paint flowing you just hold it down, push it in and out a few times and then that gets the ink flowing into the nib. Now it's quite simple. Just put it along the side of the rail and pull it along and just go back and forth like that. You can see you've got the rusty red, you can let that dry. I'm just going to do this side of the rail and this side of the rail because no one's going to see the other side so there's no point in doing it. So I'm going to carry on do the whole length here. Uh, once it's dry then I can just go along the top with a track rubber just to make sure there's no paint on the surface because obviously you need to keep this clean so your locos can pick up their uh, power from it. So I'll carry on and do that and then we'll come back and look at the, uh, the finished item. Gone over the whole length now with the pen. Just be careful when you're doing it that you don't get too much on the sleepers. You want it just on the rails and on the chairs. And as you put it on, you can make it um, darker in some sections just to give you a variation of rust down along the line. That looks quite good there. If you're modeling an abandoned siding, of course you can use this on top of the rails and all around it to give more of a, a rusty effect. But I'm gonna leave that to dry now. And once it's dry, we'll come back and we'll start the ballasting. Right, let's have a little chat about what I use for ballast. I use various things. In here we have bird grit. So this is more of a gravelly colour. Then we've got, of course, the Woodland Scenic coarse ballast. And then in here we have some aquarium gravel. It's a lot finer. I think this is better scale-wise for double O. And then we just have the same sort of thing, just a slightly different colour. The great thing about aquarium gravel is you can get a big bag like this for around eight quid in the pet shop. Likewise with the bird grit, I think that was a couple of quid. Smaller bags again are a couple of quid, a lot cheaper than this. Really with the ballast when you put it down you're just looking for the effect because if you're going to weather it afterwards you're not going to really see the, the colour and I tend to just use this stuff because it's about the right size scale wise. It's cheap, it works the same way, it will glue in place with PVA. So there's just some of the things I use for ballasting. Now we'll get on and do the ballasting. Before I carry on with the ballasting you can see here now I've done the painting of the rails, that's complete. Now to be honest, the pen, if you can see there how the nib of the pen, come on focus, there we are. you can see how the, the nib of the pen collapsed basically when I was painting so it wasn't great, the colour perfect, um, but the application using the fibrous tip not so good. Well, basically when it got full of paint it got very weak and just all uh, just collapsed. So what I did instead is when I was in Bristol I popped into a Warhammer. Come on with that focus in. I grabbed up a pot of paint. There you can see it. That is Skyrag Brown. 
close enough to rust. The guys in the shop are actually very helpful. If you need any information on painting models and that sort of thing, they're usually very good in there because they do a lot of obviously painting for their Warhammer hobby. And I picked up a, just a small brush and I used that just to paint the rails. And it came out quite effective. So now before I start the ballasting, I'm going to clean the rails just using my track rubber. And then I'm going to run my track setter down just to make sure it's all perfectly straight. Because once you put the ballast and the glue in, it's going to set everything in place. And then uh, I'll give it a vacuum and then start the ballasting. So I'll come back to you when I'm doing the ballasting. Rails are all cleaned and vacuumed. One thing I will say when you're cleaning the rails is if you're having a buffer stop, don't clean off the rails where the buffer stop is because they'd be all rusty. They're only showing you where the trains are actually running on them. Just for a little bit of added realism. So on with the ballasting. Now, the traditional method is you have a little plastic hopper to lay it down or you just have a spoon like this, lay the ballast down and get a soft brush and just spread the ballast down. You can see here I've put a piece of masking tape along the edge. That's to hold the ballast in, stop it falling off the edge and also it'll help uh, seal it in and stop any when I get to the gluing of the glue dripping down on the carpet. Which I'd be a lot of trouble for. So this is just a way of doing it. Just brushing it along, doing the shoulder. And it can be quite time consuming and tedious. And then you can get so far and then you can tap the rails with the spoon then helps the ballast hop around and settle down between the sleepers and come off the sleepers. Some people like doing this, find it very therapeutic. I don't. So when I seen this product being advertised by Bexhill West Railway, I thought I got to get it. So I'm going to show that to you now. What I've got here, this is a little 3D printed item. It's the ballast vacuum. So when you order it, you get this part here and this part here, which you can see just a normal soft drinks bottle screws into. And you get yourself some hose to connect the bits up. So that bit, you can see the grooves, goes on the rails, goes through the tube into the bottle where the collects the ballast and then the other end is connected to the vacuum cleaner. So I'm going to show you how it works. Ballast over and I've just roughly brushed it into position. Now I'm going to switch on the vacuum. It's going to get a little bit noisy. I'm going to take my applicator. The bottle is sitting in my pocket. So it might get a bit noisy. If you've got a vacuum with um, variable speed on it, use the lowest speed. And all you do Put it on the rails so the grooves fit in. And run it up and down. And you can see there, how the vacuums are all off, leaving the ballast between sleepers and you can use it then just to come along tidy up the edge so you get a nice straight edge and then the stuff it picks up is in the bottle for you to use again as simple as that so you can do a whole section of rail in a few minutes. So can't recommend this highly enough if you're doing ballasting. It's so simple, so easy, and it works. So I'm gonna carry on now, do the rest of this, and then come back and show you the ballasting complete. As you can see, the ballast vacuum has done a nice job there. And you can see it's left a nice ballast shoulder there along the edge of the track. 
And then I'm just using some draft excluder you would get for around the doors. You can pick this up in the pound shops just to stick down to create a dam for the ballast area around the signal box and the signal there and going onto the platform. So, next job, applying the glue. So, it's time to glue the ballast in place. First thing we do, get some wet water. This is just water, a little bit of either dishwasher rinse aid or a little bit of washing up liquid in there. Help breaks up the surface tension and give it a good soaking. Some people use um, isopropyl alcohol. Water's free, does the same thing. So give it a good soak. So you want a spray bottle that gives a fine mist because you don't want it uh, disturbing the ballast that you've just spent the time putting down. That's giving a good soaking. So what I do then is I've got PVA glue. This is a 50-50 mixture. So 50% PVA, 50% water. You can use a 60-40. Again, so 60% water, 40% PVA. Put it in a bottle. Again, a little bit of washing up liquid in there. You can give it a good shake in this to mix it up. And then you can either use a pipette to put it on. What I use is one of these sauce bottles. And you can pick these up usually in pine shops, somewhere like that. It just makes the application of it a lot easier. If you're doing a pipette, it can be very time consuming. Doing it this way. It's a lot quicker. Plus the fact when you have it mixed up in a bottle like this, it'll actually keep for months. As long as you keep the top on. And then we're just going to Future Mark here, while editing the video, I discovered my mic died. So basically what I'm doing here now is just pouring the glue mixture on the track, down the centre of the track and along the edges, allowing it all to seep in. So I'm going to do this over the whole track and then what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll come back and show you the results. Had a good soaking with the PVA mixture. And um, we'll just leave that to dry now. It could take 24 hours, 48 hours. But when it's all dry, we'll come back and we'll do some weathering of the ballast. Glue's all dried. It's all nice and hard now. This ballast isn't going anywhere. So now I'm gonna do a bit of weathering. For that, I'm gonna use my airbrush. And I'm using some Railmatch sleeper ground. So I'm going to get the airbrush and everything all set up now and we'll weather the track and the ballast. All right, so I'm going to add some of the paint now to the bowl on the airbrush. I'm just going to add a couple of drops of this because we don't need a lot. You know, it's always, you know, mix up a little bit at a time because you don't want to waste any. I got some thinners here. I'm just going to take a couple of drops of that. You want about a 50-50 mix. We put on the compressor so it might get a bit noisy now. I'm just going to put my finger over and press the air. Let's put the lid on first. We're putting the lid on and just keeping your finger over that. That allows the air to go back up into it and helps mix the paint. So before we want to do anything, we want to make sure everything's working. So a bit of paper, just to check your spray pattern on it. How it's coming out. And now you can see how it's coming out on there. This camera is not liking the focus at the moment. So now it's a matter of just gently coming down, keeping a couple of centimeters away. And just keep it moving. And 
going along. Up and down. And it's just a matter of carrying on like that with the airbrush. If you don't have an airbrush, this uh, you can get this rail match in an aerosol can, does the same thing. And if you can't get that, you can just use a paintbrush to paint on. It'll take a little bit longer, it can be just as effective. So I'm going to carry on, do the rest of this now, and then I'll come back and show you the result. So you can see the application of the sleeper ground there. It just takes the shine off the sleeper so it looks a bit more realistic. Gone over it a bit heavier in the station area. And you can see there up on the platform, bits of the uh, overspray going up in there. Again, gives it a bit of a weathered appearance. And then some lighter airbrushing on the area that's around the signal box here. And on up the track. Said it takes the plastic look off the sleepers, makes it look a bit more realistic. And along with the rails being painted, it looks quite effective. And as well, you can see some of the overspray there up the side of the signal box there. Helps blend it in, makes it look a bit dirty, a bit tired, like a real railway. And again, a bit heavier in the station. So that's another job complete on the railway. Um, what's left to be done now is, well, there's lots still to be done. You can see I've already started doing some of the lighting. Got the scenic work to do here. Got this area here, which is going to be the river valley. So I'll be tackling those jobs now for the next couple of weeks. So plenty more to do. There we go, a bit more work done. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Uh, there'll be another video here and one here, subscribe button in the middle, and I'll see you next week with some more work on this layout. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye for now.